Hello there. So I recently did a Facebook Live event on this particular topic, are we eating too much arsenic? It's a very, very serious question, but I'm actually not talking about arsenic, but let me explain. So I did this Facebook Live event and I was talking about, I know it's sort of a provocative title about arsenic, it gets people to listen really. The idea is from a book that I just recently bought called The New Pritikin Program, which is um, an old school program for healthy eating and I wanted to know more about it so I was researching it. Um, this book came out in 1990 and it was it's based on the diet lifestyle plan of Nathan Pritikin from the late 70s and 80s. He was a nutritionist um, and a longevity researcher, very well known um, and has had a lot of success with helping people resolve diseases and complications and things with nutrition. So very interesting. I wanted to know more about it. But what I loved the most was this example in the beginning. It was a little story. And I'm going to actually read this little story to you because it really hit me. And I hope it hits you too. So let me just get to this page. Okay. So imagine a society where people are crazy about arsenic. They love the way it tastes. It goes with just about every food. They sprinkle it on cereal, stirred into hot drinks, cooked into meat, vegetables, desserts, breads. Soon you can't buy anything that's not doused with arsenic. And it's an unbeatable flavor enhancer and no one can imagine food without it. But then the problem is people started to get sick. Some people's hair fell out, other people lost their teeth, others got nauseated and dizzy or suffered excruciating headaches. Some people even died right in the middle of a golf game or lunch. What was going on? Was there any common link in all these different illnesses? Doctors, nutritionists, and other experts scrambled around trying to cure what seemed to be a growing number of baffling diseases. Some even wondered if it could be the arsenic. It was in everything, wasn't it? But no, it couldn't be that. Look at all the people who ate just as much arsenic as everyone else and they seem to be fine. So the Hair Association funded research into new hair loss treatments and better hair transplants. The Tooth Association came up with new and improved false teeth and dental aids. Pharmaceutical companies pushed a wide range of drugs to combat nausea, dizziness, and headaches. Some of these preparations did exactly what they claimed to do, but most had side effects that were as bad as the symptoms that were diagnosed to alleviate. And none of them worked on every disease. If you took one drug to combat this problem and another, or several appeared in its place. If you took more than one drug at a time, they often counteracted each other or led to completely new symptoms, everything from diarrhea to impotence. Then came some truly terrible news. Research seemed to indicate that a common link in some of these illnesses might, after all, be excess arsenic. But people couldn't do without it. They loved the arsenic. It, it was what made food good. Drug companies, dietitians, and medical specialists fell over themselves trying to come up with solutions. Experts told television audiences they could get all of the taste of arsenic and none of the harm with Product X. Health Foods boasted things like 23% less arsenic per serving. In the medical, medical establishment, the gears ground slowly. Nothing, they reported, was quite conclusive yet. And still, people got sick and died. Finally, someone who had been following all this because he was suffering so badly himself and was frustrated because no medication seemed to help him got an idea. What would happen if I just stopped eating arsenic, he wondered. So that's exactly what he did, and what happened was remarkable, even miraculous. His symptoms disappeared. All those cures, the promises, the quick fixes, all those mega doses of vitamins and minerals, all the drugs, all the medicines, suddenly he didn't need any of them. And there was a dividend. Food didn't need arsenic to taste good. In fact, once he stopped adding arsenic to his food, he liked it better than when it was doused in the stuff. This is a really, really amazing story. I love the way that they put this because when you think of it as arsenic, it starts to make a lot more sense like, oh yeah, that does sound crazy. And of course, um, in this story, we're not talking about arsenic. It's not, you know, this is an, um, an, an, an analogy for the fat, the salt, the oil, the sugar, all these added things that we add to our food to make them taste amazing, to make them addictive. Um, you know, these food companies are adding these very powerful sweeteners, these very concentrated oils and salts and sugars and things that make things taste unnaturally good. That's what the arsenic is in this story because they have negative effects over time. You eat them as you go, it gets worse and worse, these negative effects. So, um, just as in this story is not about arsenic, the symptoms of this poisoning aren't always obvious. They can crop up unpredictably. And they may not even appear at all in certain people, at least for many, many years down the road. What's worse is not only um, the damage from this excess fat, sugar, salt, oil, um, it's sometimes silent, but it's also deadly. So in a good percentage of cases, the first symptom of heart disease, for instance, is sudden death. So I love this example um, because it really 
when you when you make something so obvious like that, well, yeah, why would you eat arsenic if you know everyone knows you're not supposed to eat arsenic? But the thing is, I think people are so addicted to these foods and they're so um, interested in having those flavors that they they just will keep eating that arsenic. They'll just keep having it, you know. And I'm guilty of it too. I do it. You see in my vlogs, I have um, moments where I'm extremely weak and I can't get out of that, um, you know, cycle. But it is the thing that sort of causes these problems. You know, seven of the top ten killers in the U.S. is not uh, murder. <laughs> it's not. It's not um, terrorists. It's chronic diseases that come from what we eat: <laughs> heart disease, um, strokes, diabetes, uh, cancer. Seven of these ten causes of death in the U.S. They're all based on what we're eating. So the majority of people could save themselves from these particular diseases they didn't eat the foods that caused those diseases. They come from exposure to these types of foods over a very long period of time. So you have this stuff every single day. Sure, it's not gonna affect you uh, in a week. It's not gonna affect you in a year. It might not even affect you in 10 years. But 30, 40, 50 years down the road, that's when they, you start to get these effects. You know, uh, the top um, killer in the US is heart disease. Um, and it probably would be cancer, except that people die sooner from heart disease and probably have cancer, but it never show, rears its ugly head because of the heart disease. So we live longer now, so we get these chronic diseases um, instead of the more acute diseases back in the day in the early 1900s. The top causes of death were like um, tuberculosis, you know, influenza, these types of things that are acute. You get them and you die because there's not the proper medical treatment. But now we, we live past those things. We're starting to see these chronic diseases that come from lifetimes of quote-unquote abuse of the body, eating the wrong things. It's amazing what the body can survive on, that you could eat a bug, you know, <laughs> every hour and survive, or you could eat Doritos, for days and days on end and still be okay. You could eat these crazy foods all the time and still survive, but it doesn't mean that it's helping your body any. It doesn't mean that it's not causing damage. It's just the cellular damage that you don't see right away that crops up later as these larger manifestations of heart disease and cancer and strokes and diabetes and all these other types of effects that we have, kidney problems, etc. We also know that even with exposure to environmental things like pesticides, sun damage, pollution, all these sort of environmental um, hazards, carcinogens, we have an even better chance of being able to heal from this exposure if we eat foods that are high in the healing properties like antioxidants and vitamins and minerals. We know these things to be true. So even with the toxic stuff that's out in our, out in our environment, it's important to be eating these other foods to support that health. Um, to support the healing properties of the body, which they're so powerful, it's so possible. You just have to let the body do its work and give it the right fuel. So the moral of the story, um, eat more fruits and vegetables, dang it. <laughs> That's the whole idea here. Eat more nutritarian foods, more beans, more fruits and vegetables, more um, of the really, really good natural whole plant-based foods to help support that healing of the body. So if you want to know more about being a nutritarian and eating food like this, or um, if, you're, if you're somebody who really focuses on this idea already, um, there's a couple things that you can do. You can, um, if you want to learn from me, you can sign up for my email newsletter on my website, which is, um, I'll put a link down below. You get a free Healthy Recipes cookbook, and then um, you'll be signed up for my updates. And then you can also subscribe to my YouTube channel. That's the best way to get a hold of me on this, this video format. So um, subscribe, and then you can also like and comment. Those are really, really great ways to support me. So um, check out my daily vlogs as well, where I vlog about every single thing that I eat. Um, and any kind of link that you need is going to be in the description. So thank you so much for watching. I hope that this example was helpful for you. If you have any comments, let me know. And I want to ask you, do you think that this is an effective example? Did it really hit you? Did it spark something in your mind? Or was it kind of like, eh? Let me know. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching. Bye!